Good morning, everybody, and welcome to this Daiwa Anglo-Japanese Foundation webinar. Uh, my name is Jason James, and I'll be just chairing it today. So as I'm sure you all know, uh, today is a very unfortunate anniversary. It is the 75th anniversary of the dropping of the atomic bomb on Hiroshima, uh, which happened at 8.15 in the morning, 75 years ago. And we're very fortunate today to be joined by a survivor of the atomic bomb in Hiroshima, uh, Mr. Michimasa Hirata. So uh, as I mentioned, I'm in Cambridge and uh, Hirata-san, and I'm going to call him mostly Michi today, but, um, but he is joining us from Tokyo. And I'll just uh, very briefly introduce him here. I won't read out the whole slide, uh, but he was born in 1935 in Hiroshima uh, and he was nine years old when the nuclear bomb was dropped. Um, and many people did not talk about their experiences of the nuclear bomb uh, because there was discrimination against people uh, who had experienced it. Um, but in 1995, uh, Michi began to speak out about his experiences and he speaks English. So he was able to speak out uh, not just in Japan, but also internationally in many uh, forums around the world. Um, he's a graduate of Tokyo University Department of Agriculture, and he got an MS in chemistry from Iowa State University in 1967. So this is the timeline. Um, my introduction is a bit longer than usual because we're going to show you a brief video in a moment. Um, and then we'll have the talk, which will consist of a kind of Q&A uh, between myself and Michi. And then we'll have a Q&A session with you. Uh, the audience. I should warn you, um, by the way, that uh, some of this talk might be a little bit upsetting. Um, the video, uh, which we're about to show you, I certainly found a little shocking. So, you know, I suppose that's what you'd expect given the subject matter. But uh, if anybody feels they can't stomach a detailed discussion of what happens when a nuclear bomb is dropped, um, maybe you shouldn't be joining this. Right, uh, let me just give you a brief timeline of what was happening around the end of World War II because not everybody may be uh, familiar with this. So the US started the Manhattan Project in which the UK was also involved um, to develop nuclear weapons. And that started in 1942 uh, and continued until 1946. When we came into 1945, um, by February of 1945, I think it was clear uh, that the Allies were going to win the war. So a conference was held in Yalta uh, between the big three powers, America, the UK and Russia, uh, essentially to talk about uh, what the world order was going to look like uh, after the war. And one of the key things that was uh, agreed at that conference was that Russia was going to join the war against Japan. So Russia would actually attack Japan three months after Germany surrendered. Um, then, uh, obviously, the war was raging uh, in Japan itself. Uh, there was a very severe bombing raid in Tokyo uh, on the night of March the 9th to 10th uh, that year, in which 100,000 people were killed. Of course, that was one of many bombing raids on Tokyo and other cities. Um, also, the land war was going on in the south of Japan, the Battle of Okinawa. Uh, so Okinawa was invaded by the Americans. Uh, and 200,000 people are said to have been killed uh, in that battle, including, I think, one quarter of the population of Okinawa itself. May the 8th was the surrender of Germany. And then moving on to the next slide. Um, on July the 16th, the US carried out what was known as the Trinity nuclear test, so it decided to test its nuclear bombs in the desert in New Mexico. Um, and uh, following the test, a group of U.S. scientists insisted that the bomb should not be used um, because it was so terrible. And the following day, there was another uh, major international conference, the Potsdam Conference. This was mainly about uh, how to deal with the administration of Germany, uh, which had, of course, already surrendered uh, by this time. Anyway, despite the representations from the scientists, the first bomb was dropped 75 years ago today on Hiroshima. Uh, on August the 6th. Uh, it was a uranium bomb, and about 140,000 people are said to have died as a result of that bombing. And then three days later, a second nuclear bomb, uh, a different type, a plutonium nuclear bomb, was dropped on Nagasaki, uh, and about 75,000 people are said to have been killed 
uh, by that. And on that day, August the 9th, the Soviet Union did enter the war against Japan, as had previously been agreed. Um, and this pretty much triggered the immediate surrender of Japan. Um, it, uh, I think the Jap Japanese more or less decided to surrender immediately, but the formal surrender took place on August the 15th. So then Japan was occupied uh, by the Americans for several years uh, until it formally regained its independence in 1952. Um, and it's just worth mentioning here that there were uh, censorship rules uh, in place uh, during the occupation. So certain subjects couldn't be discussed, including the nuclear bombs. And then 1947 to 1991, of course, we had the, the Cold War going on uh, between the US and the USSR. And I'd just like to show you a map of Hiroshima as well, um, so that you can see where uh, Michi himself was. Um, so there's a map of Hiroshima. The red circle in the middle is the hypocenter. Uh, in other words, immediately under where the bomb exploded. And within the broader, sorry, within the narrower, uh, darker pink circle, pretty much everybody died immediately um, after the bomb was dropped. And of course, there was severe damage, certainly for two kilometers or more around. And Michi's home is exactly, or well, almost exactly two kilometers, I think it's 1.9 kilometers from the hypocenter of the bomb. And um, as he will explain, he, with his father and aunt, uh, left his house uh, later in the day to join his mother and sisters. Um, they had been evacuated to somewhere that was actually five kilometers from the hypocenter. So it's actually off the map, um, but we've had to put the circle there. Um, so he went to join uh, the rest of his family later in the day. And you can see that because of the rivers that run through Hiroshima, in order to get across the river, he had to sort of come into town a bit uh, and pass by the edge of the zone where pretty well everything had been wiped out. Okay, next slide, um, if there is a next slide. Now, I think what we're gonna do now is show you a video. So this is um, a reconstruction by the BBC of the dropping of the atomic bomb. Um, but of course, we have somebody who was actually there at the time. Um, so welcome, Michi, and thank you very much for joining us today on this important anniversary. Um, could you tell us what your own experience was at 8.15 in the morning on August the 6th, 1945? Okay, first, first of all, thank you, Jason. And uh, it's a uh, very great honor for me to, to be invited by your fund. And uh, permit me to speak to all audience uh, in the universe like uh, background, <laughs> and uh, this may be uh, uh, the uh, voices of the of the dead on the seventy fifth year uh, or so. But back to my uh, story, and so uh, uh, reply to Jason's questions. My house is located at two point one kilometers. Uh, rather uh, 1.3 miles away from the epicenter of the rust. And uh, yes, the yellow circle on the light is a uh, real idea. And uh, I tell you later on, the Jason already mentioned about the uh, my mom and two sisters uh, were living above the uh, yellow line on, on the top of the uh, slides. And uh, on 8.15, I was so uh, relaxing after breakfast with my father and my aunt, suddenly a powerful flash of light 
came in through the city, my father spontaneously pushed me into the shelters in the garden. Then followed my aunt. And finally, when my fa father was going into the shelters, shockwave hit him. And the shockwave gave the uh, lots of uh, debris of the uh, windows, glass, or anything that can be uh, blown off. And my father's face was lacerated by flying fragments of grass. So he was covered with, uh, with, with blood as he came into the shelters. Okay. And then, so how long did you spend in the shelter? And what, what was it like when you came out? I really don't know how long uh, we were in the shelters. But when we came out from the shelters, my house was entirely changed. My house barely standing in a state of almost complete collapse. Just the scenery came into my eye. Blue tiles and the window grasses, uh, all the blown away. And the wall of plaster fell down, then the heat started, Sm smolder the flammable materials such as debris of wood houses or horn woods, wood fences and grass in open area were burning here and there. Okay, so there's small fires everywhere. What, what about people? Did you see any people after that? Well, uh, we were uh, surprised just at first taking care of our home, but when we, we went out in front of my house, the, the left hand side uh, drawing, all the drawings are painted by Hibakusha just uh, in accordance with their memory. And there are gradual increase people escaping from the center of town and most of them were burned with their clothes in drag and were staggering from, uh, along the pushing out the arm forward with the skin hanging down and the other skin hanging down with where the uh, the arms could not touch the skin, then naturally proceeds the hand forward. That's a uh, many per person uh, in this shape are coming through to escape from the city to say her place. It's uh, just a line of a ghost. And uh, from the appearance, 
it is completely indistinguishable whether they are male or female or or young and they are groaning please give me water water please and they they just please give me the slide of the painting anyway they gather the the around the water reserve which is usually saved up by every home to fight the uh, fire bombing and the uh, people gather there was uh, summer just uh, relieved by drinking water or some other just as you see that in the tank okay and um so then uh, obviously you went to join uh, your mother and sisters can you tell us a bit about that okay just uh may i add one comment that uh, as uh, probably you know that in the uh, wartime the old-fashioned camera as a, a silver complex film and uh, all the films were ex uh, exposed by radiation and this is the reason why just painting was done. Okay, okay. so there are no, no photographs. Yes, I see. And uh, probably, uh, no, not probably, but Jason explained previously that uh, near the end of the war, with violent bombing, the government issued enforce the evacuation program for the pupils at school in the city to evacuate to the countryside, either by group or by person. And my mother and two sisters and myself already evacuated to the suburb just uh, showed in the city map. Back to my story, around five o'clock in the evening or so, when the fire calmed down a little bit, my dad decided to go to the, my family because they must worried about this. We walked out, but soon we were blocked on the road because it was uh, still hot and uh, there is a lots of messy situation with uh, all electric pole or tangled cable or on uh, the rear of the house, burnt house. We changed the route to use the ordinary route by of course, by on foot, taking an ordinary road instead. My father decided to go up to the bank of the railway road, and uh, we followed, I followed at, to the top of the bank of the railway road, Japan Railway, and uh, there are lots of 
uh, corpse uh, or injured person uh, laying down. And as uh, you saw in the city map, that we have to cross the river because Hiroshima is uh, a uh, river of town, it's a delta zone. So the, we have to cross the railway bridge of which pillar is, was made of wood, not as concrete today. So the fire ignite the pillars. Anyway, it took about uh, three or four times longer than usual uh, route. We finally arrived my mother's home. And on the other hand, while my mother saw the uh, mushroom clouds in the morning, and rush into the, the street and ask all the people who were escaping from the Hiroshima, what happened with Hiroshima and what, what is the result. But there's uh, no one to answer uh, like questions. And it is um, just, she was so tired to, to look around us. And when she was prepared for the worst near midnight, we arrived there. When my mother saw me, she ran out and hugged me with tears, saying, so you are alive. Well, thank you, God. Right. So, well, thank you very much for sharing those experiences with us. Um, and I understand it was difficult to talk about this for some years. Can you tell us about that? Well, right after the uh, bombing in, in, in August, the Allied forces uh, and uh, the GHQ occupation, as uh, Jason told previously, the censor, in other words, a press court was issued against uh, the atomic bomb one of the topics is atomic bomb. So that uh, we could not speak privately. Of course, officially no magazine, newspapers was uh, uh, written on the items, but even beating the people, they do not, not talk much about it. They, uh, they have to keep silence. That uh, press code is uh, from 1945 to 1952, when the Japan uh, exchanged the uh, truce agreement in San Francisco. Okay, and then um, even after, <laughs> And became independent, say so in 1952. I believe you didn't, you didn't really speak about your experiences for some time. That's right. So when did you start talking about your experiences? Well, the in 1995. When another gay, 
the B-29 bomber, which dropped the atomic bomb over Hiroshima, was planned as a permanent uh, exhibition at the Smithsonian Institute in Washington, D.C. of America. At the same time, a bomb exhibit, exhibition of a bomb, is also planned to be held as a side event of it. Suddenly, it was canceled due to the strong opposition by Veterans Association. I happened to see a TV movie, I mean TV news, news program, that the peace activist in the U.S. made a rally toward the uh, White House. And the top line who carrying the banner in the middle showed oriental faces. I mean, the male faces uh, was seen. And uh, I think it might be my code but I'm not sure because uh, being a Hibakusha is uh, just uh, not intentionally keep silent, but keep away to talk by himself. And uh, when he came back to, to Japan, I talked to him that, is it you? And his answer is yes. I participate in the movement. He took uh, uh, a pay vacation for joining the uh, activities. And I know each other for more than 40 years, but we do not know each other as a Ibaksha because we are keeping silent on the fact of survivors. Of course, there is some discrimination especially for female, but also it was uh, prevailed for male too. And that incident triggered me to start my activity because uh, I was always think to be active or to, to work for some part for the movement, but it is sometimes it's the, the politics has uh, some big influence on the uh, activity, and uh, we finished to the. Uh, Our obligation to be a survivor is uh, usually near the uh, retirement period or so. And my colleague was uh, six years senior to me, but he also started the close to the retirement. And that, that is a story. Okay. Um, just in case anyone isn't familiar with the word, I ought to mention that hibakusha is a term which is used 
for people who experience the atomic bombs. Um, I believe it's used in English as well as Japanese. So Michi, um, after you started to become active uh, talking about your experiences and, and about atomic bombs, uh, what kind of activities have you been doing? Since I have a, a, a education or a graduate study in, in, in the States, I came to believe that it might be my mission to talk directly in English about my Hiroshima experience overseas. Since then, on my own initiative, I have given talk about my experience in America, Germany, Israel, New Zealand, and other countries mainly aimed at younger generation. Yes, I, I see that um, photograph was a talk that you very kindly did for us in Sheffield a couple of years ago. Um, so your, your talks are mainly aimed at the younger generation. What is the message you would like to give younger people? My intention is just, it is not to revenge or to blame or to ask apologies. My only intention is to know how terrible of the nuclear weapons and it should be abundant uh, from the from a planet. That is a main intention to tell my stories. And uh, as in the slides, today's nuclear bombs are said to have uh, 100 or 1,000 times the power powerful than one dropped on Hiroshima. And it is still uh, 13,400 nuclear weapons are still existing on the earth. And one third of the nuclear weapons are on high alert uh, if some of the parties who own the nuclear weapons by chance or by intention, one will have this uh, sure it, then within three minutes, then about 900 will have will be returned to launch as, uh, as uh, in this uh, slide, sir, that uh, uh, if it is used, uh, 100 million people would die. So the key is to stop and to join our movement toward to ban the nuclear weapons. Right, thank you. And so what uh, do you want young people to do to avoid making the mistakes of the past? Well, most important thing is uh, to know the, the fact of the nature of the nuclear weapons. As a generation who can pass on their experience of war or bombing, 
die out. People's understanding of the world or atomic norm is rapidly fading. What should we do to avoid repeating the era of the past? What I would like to talk to them is first listen to the direct testimony of Hibaksha survivors or who will be witness directly were this COVID-19 uh, shows that online testimony is increasing for all of histories. And see the documents, books of testimony. Some young people prefer cartoons and also films, video, plays. But on top of that, I would strongly invite young people to visit Hiroshima and Nagasaki to see the museum there. Well, um, I think we probably bring it to an end there. Um, thank you very much uh, again, Michi, for sharing your experiences with us and in helping us think about nuclear weapons, which I, um, you know, of course, many of us listening are, were not around 75 years ago. Probably most of us listening were not around 75 years ago. Um, and so you've helped us to mark this very important anniversary. So, um, I, uh, yeah, thank you very much indeed. Um, and sorry to uh, use up your evening and I know what has been a very busy time for you. I think you have a lot of requests for interviews and that kind of thing. So thank you very much.